Let's get started on section eight, the normal probability distribution. Okay, if all the distributions we're gonna talk about, one that comes up the most, one that people use all the time, is kind of the fallback, is it's this. It's this concept of the normal distribution. <clears throat> so, uh, first let's talk about continuous random variables. We started with just, with discrete, so we're talking about individual events, right? And that's usually good for, that are individual events, yes, that are discrete, but it's also good for s smaller samples, you know, you're talking hundreds, um, not thousands or millions. Uh, jumping ahead a little bit, but once you get up to, you know, millions of samples, things start behaving like, uh, is something that's continuous uh, anyway. So you can use these distributions. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's get set up there. All right, so <coughs> this is what we'll go over in section eight. Um, bit of just calculations, getting used to the tables and how to calculate. We'll do a little bit on Excel, but uh, I want to show you how to do tables and, and how to go over that. So I'll use the iPad with the table out and, and the pointer going, and I'll be able to show you what I'm doing and talk you through it. All right, so 8A, uh, discussion of continuous, concept of continuity, and continuous, and I'll just say measurements. To continue I just just opened up measures or measurements so something that's continuous that's not so when you talk about uh, things that are discrete it would be that like the number of events the number of car accidents the number of shootings uh, the number of defective bolts right that kind of stuff but then you can talk about measuring things what's the weight of the bolt right well that that's a continuous range. So you're talking about time. That's obviously smooth and continuous. We're talking about length, right? There's not a discrete measure. It's everything in between, the continuity of that. Uh, volume, uh, force. So, you know, volumes of measurements. Uh, so, so length, actually, I'll write some of this stuff down. Those things are nice at first, but then they're annoying. So we can talk about time, obviously, length of something. Uh, so that L, that's smooth and continuous, a continuum concept. Volume, same thing. You put a vol volume in a beaker, right? Same idea. It's smooth and continuous. You could argue at a very fundamental physics level that it isn't because you have molecules of uh, water or something that if you add another molecule it's a discrete thing that's okay we're not going there we're, this is a stat class not a not a philosophy physics class okay, okay but theoretically you want to push my concepts i can i can do that as well right so volume in there <coughs> Uh, force, same idea. <coughs> pushing something. You have somebody pushing a cart, applying a force to something, and it's going that way. Density, how dense a material is. Those are all a continuum con concept. And if you did mathematics so far, which you all have, th those are what you mostly would be using <coughs> and describing. So if you, what happens if you take a bunch of measurements and you look at the relative frequency of those, those things that occur, <clears throat> um, number of, uh, okay, let's go back. So X is your random variable and you have, let's just say number of things that happen. So number of whatever that happens. So something happened and Fewer times, it happens less, and this happens a bunch of times, but mostly it's in the middle. And you get this clumping sort of concept, like that. 
And the more and more you do it, the more it behaves like a smooth continuous function. And that's where this idea of continuity and the <coughs> uh, probability distribution comes in. So, uh, hold on one second, oh well. So <coughs> that's, that's the idea. Uh, these are discrete concepts here. But as you do more and more, which I kind of mentioned, it, it becomes more of a, of a continuous thing. So, for example, when people study education ideas, they, they really use this normal distribution stuff. They, they don't use the discrete stuff so much, um, which is a leap sometimes. Like when I do my classes and I use all this type of statistics, standard deviations and all that, and if I were to, it's really a small number. It's, it's discrete because you're looking at like exam scores, which is a small number. So uh, anyway. All right, <clears throat> sorry about that. Moving on. Okay, so uh, let's continue then. So we call this basic distribution, the probability density function. Oops. And let's just jump to that but down here. <clears throat> so this is called the probability din uh, distribution. Or sometimes called the probability density function, <clears throat> which I believe is what I had on the on the um, I'm looking at that, which I know is backwards. So so seven continuous probability function yeah i just did the same thing or probability density function so that's kind of the the major thing we we look at and and discuss and study so this looks more like a graph you would have studied somewhat there's your x this is y or your f of x and then you have this type of curve that looks something like that. It can be symmetric. Uh, I put the, I, I can't help myself. I put the little arrow tails on uh, one sided and it implies it approach it asymptotically. They don't in, in the stat books I've noticed, <clears throat> but that's what it should look like. So then what's underneath this curve, let's say you're looking at this probability from say A to B, what's the probability that something occurs between A and B? So maybe um, let's just do something simple like weight of a, of a car or something or <clears throat> weight of a Frisbee, I don't know. It can be between the probability that it's between A and B from the manufacturer, right? So this area here is what we consider the, the, they call it density, but it's really the area under the curve. And so that's the probability in question. <clears throat> so this area is the probability that something will occur between A and B. So we call that the probability A less than X less than B. So the pro so X is the random variable, the continuous random variable that could represent a number of things. <clears throat> uh, so when you look at that curve, this is your function that has, I'll show it to you, and we'll say, oh, that's great, and then we'll move on. But that's uh, what we're looking for. So we're going to look at in between. We're going to look at as it approaches um, 
infinity uh, out here, and then to the left and see what we what we have. A couple things about this um, we need to know. This is a probability, just like the stuff we've studied so far. Uh, the area must equal one. Area under F must equal one for it to be a probability density function. If it doesn't, then it's not a probability density function. That's the, that's the concept. So, so area under curve is one. So probability, if you went from negative infinity to infinity must equal one. That's really what you're calculating. Now, to do that, to, to do the actual calculations is difficult with that function. It requires numerical rules and calculus to do it. And uh, I'll show it to you only in case you happen to have studied that before, but we'll do that later. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, one of the things that's peculiar about stuff like this is... If you just look at a point and you call that, say, C, then the probability that X equals C is, well, it's just a line. There's no, so think about it this, the way, mathematically speaking, probability that it is C with this setup, so let's go all the way to the top. If you think of it as area, there's no width to it. So can you have area without width? The answer is no. So that probability must equal zero. So it isn't like those discrete cases where we did calculate the probability. For continuous random variables, you can't have probability of just one thing like that. <clears throat> we have to have a range. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just say for continuous random variable, I'll write it out. So for continuous random variables, <clears throat> all right, so the probability of x greater than or equal to c is actually the same as the probability for x greater than c or less than because at c it doesn't matter okay and then you could also say it like this or the probability of x less than or equal to c is equal to the probability of x strictly less than c. Okay, so at the value c, it doesn't matter. And we'll look, we, we will analyze that as we do, do the tables and stuff. All right, so this is not true in general for discrete cases. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so there's a couple different distributions you can look at. Uh, there's they, they talk about it in the book a little bit. But when I say distributions, like what does the graph look like? So you could have one that's, uh, they do the box one that's like completely symmetric, no matter how far you go over. So it could be that, not a very interesting one. Most data does not represent that at all when you look stuff up. Uh, you could do exponential cases but the way it works isn't usually going to help us at all so it could go up could be could stop at some point like this <clears throat> and then this probability down here might be what you're looking at 
But as long as this area here adds up to one, then it then it's a probability density function. <clears throat> okay, so just read over that, but don't worry about too much. What we want to get to next is the normal probability distribution.